Hey guys, Josh from SoccerReviewsForYou.com, bringing you my review plus on feet video of the brand new Puma Evo Speed 1.4 SL. Now, as you guys can see, this is a giant box that I have on the ground in front of me. That's why I'm filming it on the turf as opposed to on the table, at least this part of the video. Now, this is actually a press kit, not the official retail packaging. This was sent to me directly from Puma, so thanks to them for that. Um, and I had it, so I thought I might as well show it to you guys because it is kind of interesting. If you do buy a pair of these from an actual store, they'll come in a standard red and white Puma box. So just keep that in mind. This box though, very big. It's navy blue in color with an orange stripe running through the middle. It's got your Evo Speed SL branding in white on the top. Remove the lid, you can see that the box is filled up with this soft kind of spongy foam material. And it actually has two cutouts for the left and right shoe, which is kind of neat. Uh, they do include an extra set of insoles that you didn't actually get with the limited edition 3D camo colorway, but you will get with the general release colorway that I have right here. Um, even if you do buy them from a standard retail store. So it comes in this cool little kind of insole wallet, I guess you could call it. Um, again, I rhymed, didn't mean to do that, but uh, here is a look at the comfort insole. So this is a comfort insole to go along with the thinner lightweight one already included in the shoes. Um, pretty straightforward, it's a mesh liner on top perforations throughout, and it's just a single layer of this red foam. Uh, nothing too far off from the insoles you're gonna find in most Adidas shoes right now, um, but it's nice that they do include the extra set, so if you want something with a little bit more cushioning to it, you do have that option. Although, of course, it's not going to be quite as light as the ones in the shoes right now. Other than the extra insoles, all you're gonna find inside the box, as you guys can see, are the shoes themselves. So we'll get these guys out of the box really quickly and we'll take a closer look at a pretty controversial shoe from Puma, the Evo Speed 1.4 SL. And the reason why this shoe is controversial is because it's only supposed to last 10 games. It's extremely lightweight, but the durability definitely takes a hit because of it. Um, you guys can see that on the bottom of both shoes, they put this sticker right here. So give the camera just a second to focus and you will be able to see it, there it is. If you want to pause the video and read that, you absolutely can. We're going to go over this in detail in today's video, as well as kind of show you guys how durable these things actually are based on my experiences with the limited edition 3D um, camo colorway that I've been wearing over the last couple of weeks. So if you're interested in learning more about the new Evo Speed 1.4 SL in regards to durability, the overall performance, the fit, the feel, pretty much everything you could possibly want to know, including the weight as well. Please stick around, watch the entire video. Um, if you guys are interested in a pair of these for yourself, the retail price is $240 US, $10 less than the limited edition camo colorway. Um, and you will find on the review page of my website, which will be the very first link down below in the description, buy it now links with the exclusive SR4U coupon codes, where you will be able to pick these guys up below their normal $240 retail. So if you are interested in a pair, again, first link down below in the description, go ahead and check it out. And with that being said, let's get right into the review. So to start things off, let's talk about the durability of the Evo Speed 1.4 SL, because it's the one aspect of this shoe that's gonna scare a lot of people away, and rightfully so. Now, like I mentioned, they do include this little sticker on the bottom of the sole plate of both the left and right shoe that I'm gonna read right now, and we're gonna break down exactly what this sticker says. It says, the Evo Speed SL is not for training days, it's for your best days, your match days. So to stop right there, that essentially lets you know that this is a shoe that you should be buying uh, with the intention of only using them in game. It's a great shoe, the experience that you get is fantastic, they're extremely lightweight, and the performance is far and above better than what I was honestly expecting just based on how they feel on feet. Um, but it's not a durable shoe, so if you use these at practice, they're going to feel great, um, there's no doubt about that but it's gonna cut into the lifespan of this shoe. So if you're buying this shoe to have that ultra lightweight kind of high performing experience, the best way uh, to use this shoe is going to be in game only. Not only are you going to get that feel that you're looking for, they're also going to last a little bit longer if you're using them only in game as opposed to in practices. You're welcome to use them at practice, but again, it's gonna cut into the lifespan of the shoe pretty significantly. Now to continue on, it says, it may only be used on real grass, and that is a super important thing to note in regards to the durability of this shoe. If you use this on artificial grass, either indoors or outdoors, don't expect these to last anywhere near that 10 game estimation. Um, I'd be surprised if these things lasted on turf, especially outdoor turf on a hot day, for more than 20 minutes. They would absolutely melt and be completely destroyed very, very quickly. So that warning, letting you know to use these only on real grass, 
very, very important. I would go one step further and say, if you're not playing on really nice premium natural grass soccer fields, probably not the best option either. On hard ground or any kind of field that just isn't the greatest quality, this is not a good option in regards to durability. Now, to continue on, it says, due to its extremely lightweight design, it's expected to last up to 10 games, but the moments it creates will last forever. So again, they estimate 10 games. It could be more, it could be less, it might be right on 10 games. It really is going to vary from person to person. Everyone's experience will be different. Now, in regards to my experience with the durability of this shoe, obviously this pair I haven't worn. These are brand new out of the box, but I have been wearing this pair, the pre-release 3D camo colorway over the last week or so. Up until this point, I have four playing sessions in these, two hours a piece. I didn't actually use them in game. I just moved, I'm not playing for a team at the moment, uh, but I put them through some pretty difficult training sessions. I made sure to get a lot of running um, and I've probably taken two to 300 shots in this particular pair. So they've gone through a lot more in the eight hours that I've used them than you would get from, let's say 10 games of wear for the most part. You're not gonna take two, 300 shots in 10 games. It's just not gonna happen. So uh, they've gone through quite a bit and in four sessions, they've held up relatively well. Um, there's some noticeable wear on the shoe that some of you guys probably will be disappointed with, but again, they come with a warning label. Puma lets you know that they are so light that it's detrimental to the durability and just structure of this shoe. Um, and that's exactly the experience that I had. They perform great. They feel much better than I thought they would. Whenever something is this light, I'm always skeptical of it being flimsy and just not feeling good, but these were fantastic to use. I really, really enjoy them. And even after this video, even though I'm technically done testing them out, I've kind of got all the information that I need as far as performance and durability is concerned. I'm probably gonna wear these until they go completely because I really, really like wearing them for whatever reason. It's not my style of shoe, but because they're so light, because they're so flexible, uh, the upper is really thin, it fits really nicely, um, and the traction is really good as well. They just perform extremely well and I just find them enjoyable to wear. So in regards to durability, uh, this is the right shoe. Um, and really what you need to know about the durability and what actually is going to go wrong within that 10 game estimation period, the upper is not gonna break, the sole plate's not gonna crack, the studs aren't gonna wear out. What's gonna happen is the sole plate's going to separate from the upper and that's just due to the upper being so soft and so thin. So on my right foot, the kicking foot, this is where it's seen the most amount of wear. You can see along the lateral side of the forefoot, there's probably the biggest separation out of all the um, separated parts on the shoe right here on the lateral side. Um, pretty decent separation, still very wearable, but um, noticeable amount of wear right there. Right around the toe, it stayed intact relatively well. There's nothing too major there. You can see there's a little bit of separation right here on the uh, medial side, and then right here on the medial side of the forefoot, you're gonna find a little bit more separation again, whereas the bond through the midfoot and heel area is 100% intact. No durability issues there to report whatsoever. And in regards to the left shoe, these are held in place a little bit better. My uh, weaker foot, my non-kicking foot, um, obviously I have kicked the ball with my left foot in these shoes, but not quite as much as my right foot. And you can see these are in much better shape because of it on the lateral side. There's really no major separation. There's a little bit of separation in two small spots right here on the toe, and then pretty much nothing here on the medial side at all. So the left shoe um, is holding up a little bit better than the right shoe, but that's to be expected. That's gonna be the case for anybody. Your kicking foot is going to be the one shoe that um, let's say fails uh, the soonest, but nonetheless, um, they have held up for about the same amount of time that Puma is estimating. Uh, now keep in mind that the first three times that I wore this shoe, it was on a really nice natural grass field um, and they held up pretty well. There was no major separation between the sole plate and the upper, but the fourth time that I wore them, it was on a field that was of lesser quality. It wasn't as soft, the grass was shorter, there was just more dirt to the field overall. It wasn't a nice natural grass field or what I would describe as a nice field. And uh, that's where the shoe saw the majority of its wear that you're seeing right now in this video. So again, if you're buying this shoe to use in-game only, make sure that you're using it in games where the field is one natural grass and the field is two very high quality. Because if you're playing on uh, not, such, not the greatest fields, uh, the durability is definitely going to take a hit as well. And in regards to actually fixing this shoe, um, gluing back the sole plate and the upper. You can give that a go. Based on my experiences in the past, that doesn't work out very well. I haven't tried it on this shoe and I probably won't either. Um, but 
Uh, once they start to go, and that goes with any shoe, it's really, really difficult to repair something like this. So just keep that in mind again if you are planning on buying them. Uh, it's not something that you can wear, break, and then repair, and then kind of restart from there. Uh, it's something that really is a matter of wearing them until they break, and once they're broken, um, it's kind of time for a new pair. So again, if you can justify the $240 price tag for a shoe that is um, with a warning label saying not very durable, then the playing experience you're gonna get from this shoe is absolutely fantastic, much better than I was honestly expecting. But if you can't justify the $240 price tag, which I don't think most people will be able to, that's fine. There's nothing wrong with the shoe. I like the concept and uh, the performance is great. Again, it's just not for everybody because of the higher price tag and the lack of longevity that it presents for the customer. In terms of weight, the Evo Speed 1.4 SL is as light as you could want a pair of soccer cleats to be. So I'm gonna weigh this pair for you today in real time. Keep in mind this is a brand new pair in a size 9.5 US. We're gonna throw them on the scale and you can see that they weigh in at an extremely light weight, 3.8 ounces, the equivalent of 107 grams. So if you're looking for something that is as light as possible, this is your lightest option out there. Unfortunately, they're not gonna be that durable, but they're pretty much weightless both in hand as well as on feet. And for being as light as they are, they're extremely comfortable to wear as well, given that you're on a nicer natural grass field. On harder ground, the sole plate is quite thin, so stud pressure could be an issue, uh, but on really nice fields, no issues with stud pressure. They're very comfortable, extremely lightweight. They fit really well and are surprisingly responsive considering how thin the upper actually is. So again, if you're looking for the lightest possible experience from a pair of soccer cleats, this is your best option on the market by a long shot. In regards to tech specs, the Evo Speed 1.4 SL is a very impressive shoe, but what's even more impressive is the way that these things actually perform. I would equate the experience to playing barefoot with studs being attached directly to the bottom of your feet. Um, obviously it's a thin and lightweight shoe, so it's definitely going to provide a barefoot playing experience. And because the shoes are so light, the upper is so thin, the sole plate is so flexible, and the traction is as good as it is, it's just a really enjoyable experience. They feel surprisingly natural for a thin synthetic soccer shoe, which generally can feel a little bit tight, a little bit restrictive, and not necessarily as comfortable as something with a leather upper, for example, but these feel really, really good. They're extremely comfortable and don't feel like they're squeezing your feet in any way. Like I said, they just have a nice natural sensation about them. Now the upper is an ultra thin textile based material. So you have a base layer of mesh, which creates the main portion of the upper. You can see it there in white. You have a thin layer of polyurethane on top that's pretty much translucent, as you guys can see through to the inside of the shoe. And then inside the shoe, you're gonna find what they call their spe speed frame, which is more of that textile material, a little bit more dense in this kind of crisscross pattern that spans the entire inside of the upper. It's what gives it that kind of web-like design from the outside that's actually the support cage on the inside of the shoe. It allows them to keep the shoe as light as possible, but still relatively well reinforced. I'm not gonna say that there's no rollover in this particular upper when you are making quick cuts and hard changes of direction, but it's surprisingly uh, responsive. It's much more responsive than I was expecting them to be. Uh, there isn't much rollover and like I said, they're just very comfortable. They don't have that restrictive sensation that you might expect from something like this where uh, the upper, you might imagine it to be a lot more plasticky than it actually is. This feels very soft, very natural. It's extremely thin. Um, I wouldn't say it's quite as thin as what you're going to find on something like the Nike Mercurial Vapor 10. Uh, 10. This does feel a little bit thicker to me, um, but it's thin enough to where you do get a very, very natural kind of one-to-one -one barefoot sensation. But there's just enough there to where it takes the edge off. It doesn't feel too thin on your feet. Um, so you're not going to be kicking the ball and being in pain because there's just no padding there whatsoever. This has that slight amount of padding that, like I said, just makes these feel very, very natural. It's like being barefoot, but with having a little layer of padding on the surface of your foot just to take the edge off. Um, the laces run right through the middle of the shoe, as you guys can see, which allows you to get a nice tight fit. Um, the surface of the upper is uh, got some texturing to it just due to the actual polyurethane material being fused directly to that layer. Um, that mesh base layer underneath so you have some minor texturing. It's a pretty smooth kind of matte finish though So there's really no extra grip on the ball at all, which I personally did not mind whatsoever It's got a lower cut in the heel. You do have an external plastic heel counter as you guys can see the inside heel liner is got, it has a decent amount of padding and it's made from a perforated kind of 
very soft synthetic material that feels really, really good. No issues with comfort or break in whatsoever. There's really nothing to break in with this shoe. The upper is so soft and flexible from right out of the box. Uh, like I said, it's just really a matter of getting used to how they feel as opposed to actually breaking anything in. The lightweight insoles that are included inside the shoes are very, very light and very thin. Uh, they remind me of what we got on the Nike GS 1 and 2 in that it's this very kind of lightweight, almost air-like foam. It just has a very light quality about it, I guess is the best way to put it. And despite it being quite thin, there's a decent amount of underfoot cushioning here. I found that it did move around a little bit but more so when you were putting the shoes on as opposed to when you were actually wearing them. So just be aware of that when you are putting these on, making sure the insole is kind of in place inside the shoe and it's not sliding around, gripping to your sock. Um, no liner on the top or bottom. Um, it's pretty much just straight up foam and you do have some perforations running through the midfoot and forefoot as well to cut down on as much weight as possible. But overall, no major issues with the insole whatsoever. And then moving on to the bottom of the shoe, you're gonna find the sole plate that's made from a combination of p and nylon material. So it's gonna be a little bit stiffer through the midfoot as well as the heel counter. Um, which I would assume is the nylon aspect of this particular sole plate. Um, it keeps your foot locked in place really nicely. You get some decent protection there. It's really the only protective element of this particular shoe um, at the rear portion. And then of course, you do have their speed track system, which is a slight uh, kind of stiffener bar on either side of the midfoot. Uh, just like I said, strengthening that middle portion of the shoe, which is, um, perfect on this particular model. There's really no issues with stability or just feeling like the shoe is too flimsy at all. Now, the, the sole plate in the forefoot is very thin and very, very flexible. Um, it's made from p material and uh, uh, because it's so thin, it feels great when running. It's a very natural sensation, but like I mentioned earlier, if you are on harder ground, which is not gonna be ideal for the durability, um, you will notice that there is going to be some stud pressure issues just because of how thin the sole plate actually is. And the studs, as you guys can see, are relatively long considering they were going for a, a very lightweight design. So the traction is quite aggressive. So again, it's really ideal that you use these on premium natural grass playing surfaces as opposed to harder natural grass or especially artificial grass, not only in terms of comfort, but also when it comes to durability. Now in regards to the stud pattern, it works great. It's kind of a loose variation of what you get on the Evo Power line, I would say. Uh, in the heel, you're gonna have an interesting layout. You have two bladed studs on the lateral side, and then one conical stud here on the medial side, which um, doesn't feel weird at all. I know a lot of people would be skeptical of something like this. It feels pretty normal. Um, I didn't have any issues with it at all, and it really didn't feel out of the ordinary in comparison to a shoe that has a normal four uh, stud heel layout. So no issues there whatsoever. Plus I think it looks really cool. And in regards to what you're gonna find in the forefoot, you have four conical studs closer to the front, two bladed studs at the base, and then one bladed stud right there in the middle. And again, they're a nice long uh, style of firm ground stud and they have a fairly narrow profile as well. So they dig into the ground really well and you just get really good traction overall. They dig in nicely and you just get that bite that you're looking for from a lightweight, kind of speed boot style soccer shoe. You're not gonna make you run any faster, uh, but they certainly will make you feel nice and nimble and just light on your feet because of how light they actually are. It's essentially like wearing no shoes at all, but again, with having studs strapped to the bottom of your foot. So traction, fantastic. The fit is great. They're very comfortable shoes. The touch that they provide is fantastic if you're looking for a barefoot feel. And overall, the experience of playing in these things is well above average. Um, for a thin, lightweight, synthetic shoe. Much better than I was expecting it to be. Again, the only downside is that they're not going to last very long. As far as the appearance of the shoe is concerned, I'm a big fan of the Evo Speed 1.4 SL. This is the official launch colorway. It's Lava Burst White and what they call a uh, Total Eclipse, which is kind of like a navy blue color. Uh, the Lava Burst color is a very bright orange. That looks great. I'm not a fan of brightly colored shoes, but I think this is a pretty cool looking color. Um, and it goes nicely with the theme of the shoe. It's bright orange, it's a slightly lighter color. And because it is a little bit lighter, you can see the actual speed frame uh, kind of through the rest of the upper, which is kind of a cool effect in my opinion. It's just a very futuristic shoe. It's nothing that we haven't seen before from Puma as far as design is concerned. Obviously it does have the form stripe here on the lateral side, and then you have your Puma branding here, kind of at the toe forefoot area on the medial side, speed frame branding in white. Um, and that's pretty much it. It says Evo Speed SL. Uh, for those that don't know, SL does stand for super light. You can see it says it right there under the actual SL. Laces are orange. And then you have that total eclipse color, which is like a dark navy blue at the top of the tongue, as well as in the heel liner, while the entire sole plate is that lava burst color with some white accents. 
and clear tips to the conical studs. Um, and overall, pretty cool looking shoe. I'm a big fan. Let me know your thoughts on it down below in the comment section. Do you like how these look? Why or why not? And with that being said, let's move on to the on-feet portion of the video so we can get a better idea as to how these shoes fit and of course what the sizing is like. All right, so here is a look at the Evo Speed 1.4 SLs on feet. On my left foot, I have the stock orange laces that come with the shoes. And on my right foot, I have a pair of reflective white SR4U replacement laces. If you're interested in a pair of replacement laces for yourself, be sure to check out the website www.sr4ulaces.com. you find a direct link to that website down below in the description of this video. Now in terms of how these things fit and feel on feet, they're very, very comfortable shoes despite being extremely lightweight and very, very thin. The upper, because it's made out of thin textile mesh materials, it's very soft, it's very flexible, and really requires no break-in time. It's going to stretch a little bit just based on how thin it actually is, but for the most part, the way it fits from right out of the box is the way this shoe is going to fit for its entire lifespan, which unfortunately isn't actually going to be all that long. In regards to the overall fit, it is a tighter fitting shoe, although it doesn't feel like it's squeezing your foot like I mentioned earlier in the video. It just feels like a very thin layer of sock-like material wrapping your foot and you're able to get a nice snug fit. And like I said, it's reinforced well enough to where it doesn't feel like it's unstable or flimsy on your feet. They're relatively responsive for being as light as they actually are. The shape of the shoe is a lot like what you're gonna find from the other Puma Evo Speed models. It's not a perfectly rounded toe, it kind of has kind of a, somewhat of an anatomical shaping to it, but it fits really, really well. Um, and I have no issues with discomfort whatsoever. The only thing to keep in mind again is that the sole plate is very thin. So if you are on um, kind of harder grounds or even on artificial grass, you're gonna run into issues with stud pressure as well as just durability overall. So again, if you're buying these, stick to wearing them on very premium, very high quality natural grass plane surfaces. If you don't play on those types of surfaces, probably not the best option for you. In regards to width, they are a tighter fitting shoe that um, is going to be suitable for most foot types, if I'm completely honest. They're not very narrow at all. But again, if you do have really, really wide feet, probably not the best option for you. And in regards to sizing, they run about a half size small, which is the norm for the Puma Evo Speed line. So if you are looking to order a pair of these for yourself, I recommend going half size up. I went up to a 9.5 US as opposed to my usual size 9 US, and the fit and the length is absolutely perfect. So again, if you're looking to order a pair of these for yourself, I would strongly recommend going a half size up in order to achieve the best possible fit. All right guys, this is my review of the Puma Evo Speed 1.4 SL. Be sure to look out for more content on this shoe on my channel in the near future. And of course I will be following up with a detailed written review in the coming weeks as well, which will get posted on the review page of my website, which will be the very first link down below in the description of this video. On that page, if you wanna go ahead and check it out right now, you'll find high quality images of this shoe that I took myself that give you a better idea as to how these actually do look in person, as well as buy it now links with exclusive SR4U coupon codes, where you will be able to pick these guys up below their normal $240 retail price. So again, if you're interested in a pair, first link down below in the description, go ahead and check it out. If you have any questions at all regarding the Evo Speed 1.4 SL, leave them down below in the comment section. I definitely will get an answer out to you. If you enjoyed today's video, found it helpful and informative, be sure to support it with a like. Subscribe if you haven't already for daily videos on all the latest and greatest soccer gear. You can find all my social media information down below in the description as well. And other than that, guys, hope you enjoyed today's video. And as always, thanks for watching.